So now we're going to do some more rice tables, and this is where we're looking at the common ion effect. And all that really means is that you have an ion that is common to two or more compounds. And we identify this type of problem as such because you see that we have concentrations of this and concentrations of this, but notice the ions that are involved in those compounds. Um, first thing we want to do is go ahead and set up our rice table. So we look at our reactions, and uh, our, we look at the problem, and we think about what type of reaction it would be. We've got the acid, and we've also got sodium acetate. So I'm going to start with my acid, HC2H3O2. I'm going to throw it into water. And here we just have a conjugate acid um, base pair that we have to think about. We, you know, remember that your acids are going to donate hydrogen ions, so the water ends up getting that and getting hydro forming hydronium ions. And we have acetate ions that are left over. So there's our reaction. Um, when you read through here, you see that you're starting with 0 0.1 molar solution of your acetic acid. And it also tells you that you've got 0 0.1 molar sodium acetate. Well, we don't see sodium acetate anywhere in our reaction, but we do know that sodium acetate is soluble. It is going to break down into or break apart into its ions of sodium ions and acetate ions. Um, as far as the sodium ions go, we don't care about those. Those are nowhere in the reaction, but we do have acetate ions. So we're going to go ahead and put those, the, the concentration of that, at 0.1 molar acetate ions. And we should go ahead and set up the rest of our rice table here, which just dividing things up. And again, remember your water has no concentration to it, so that goes away. That's not part of your equilibrium expression. Um, now, when we go ahead and try and fill in the rest of our initial concentration, at no point did you start with hydronium ion, so that's going to be a zero. So now what we need to do is we need to think about the changes that take place, and these are going to be x's. Since I have a zero on the right-hand side, I've got to be adding x's to the right and subtract from the left-hand side. So we do our math. And that's what we end up with for our equilibrium concentrations with the x values in there. But remember, this x, we've seen that it's going to be so small that it's negligible. So we really end up with 0 0.1 molar. And then over here, the same thing. This is just saying that the concentration is really going to be about the same, that 0 0.1 molar. So now when we go through and we calculate x, we just we know our k value, which is given to us. We could have just as easily looked that up on our reference sheet that we have. But we see that it would be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's going to be equal to uh, our products on top of our reactants, so it's going to be 0.1 times x over 0.1. So x is just going to be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, which we can see right here. My pen will work. There we go. Nope. We can see right there that um, the x is going to be the same thing as my hydrogen ion concentration. So, the whole goal of this, the reason I went through that was so that I could figure out my hydrogen ion concentration because I want to determine pH, and I know that pH is equal to the negative log of my hydrogen ion concentration. So therefore, it's the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And when you plug that in, you get that your pH equals 4.74. And that is your answer on that one. Number two.
Okay, number two is really identical to number one, except we've changed some of the concentration. So let's go through this kind of quickly. In this case, we're going to have our acid plus our water. We get our hydronium ion plus our acetate ion. And we see that we start with an initial concentration of 0.1 molar acetic acid, and we have 0 0.8 molar acetate ions um, because from that sodium acetate. So that means that we start off with zero for our hydronium ions. So as far as our changes go, again, we have to subtract x here and add x here. X is negligible, so this is pretty much 0 0.1 molar. Here we have x, and here we have pretty much 0 0.8 molar. When we go through the calculations, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals 0 0.8x over 0 0.1. So you get x equals 2.25 times 10 to the negative sixth molar. Well, we just calculated x. So what we did was we calculated the concentration of our hydrogen ions. So now when we plug that in and we say pH equals the negative log of 2.25 times 10 to the negative sixth, we get a pH equal to 5.65. So the next question on this same example is to explain the pH change from example one to example two in terms of Le Chatelier's process or principle. And really what we can see, the main, if you look at the changes, the change is that the concentration of your sodium acetate increased. So since the concentration of that product over here increased, let's write that down, since concentration of product increases, the reaction, remember if you add to the, this side, it's going to shift to the left. So the reaction shifts left. Well, in doing so, let's say uh, which decreases your hydrogen ion concentration. By shifting to the left, we now make less of this. So by um, decreasing your hydrogen ion concentration is therefore going to raise, let's say, therefore raising pH. So that explains it in terms of Le Chatelier's. These things are all related. Okay, last example. Here we are told that um, hopefully you can look at this and you've got a different K value. It says KB, which is pretty much a good indicator that this is going to be a base. But hopefully you can look at your compounds that are given to you in your problem and determine that this is a base and not an acid. So we start off with ammonia and ammonium chloride. So again, our first challenge is to make sure that we can get that reaction written correctly. We start with our base, we add it to water, and here remember a base is going to accept a proton, so it becomes NH4 with a plus one. That's where this guy comes in. and our hydroxide ions. So there's our reaction. When I read through, let me do this first. When I read through my problem, I see that I start with 0.5 molar ammonia, and I also start with 0.8 molar ammonium chloride, very soluble, breaks into its ammonium ions and chloride ions. We don't care about those chloride ions but we do care that it gives us 0.8 molar ammonium ions. And we have no hydroxide ions to begin with. So we're going to subtract x from the left, add to the right, which 
gives us this. And those x's are really tiny. So what this means is we've got 0.5 on the left. Here we've got 0.8. And here we have x. So those are the values that we have at equilibrium. So then you just go through again and do some calculations for x. And we get 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. You would just look that up. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's actually given to you. So you, um, you have that value. And that's going to be 0.8x on the top, 0.5 on the bottom. And so your x value is 1.13 times 10 to the negative 5. The question is, what does that really mean? If it's our x value, I can look here, and here's my x. That's telling me my hydroxide ion concentration. So that equals my hydroxide ion concentration. Just be careful when you go through your calculations from here. Think about it. Can you determine pH? of a solution given the hydroxide ion concentration? And the answer is yes, but you can't do it in one step. It's going to take two formulas, not just one formula. So the way I would probably approach this, and there's more than one right way, is I would say that my pOH equals a negative log of my hydroxide ion concentration. So the negative log of 1.13 times 10 to the negative fifth. So my pOH is going to equal 4.95. That's not my answer. Now what I have to do is I have to say the pH equals 14 minus my pOH, which equals 9.05. There we go.